My new offshore mesh shawl knitting pattern creates a beautiful light and airy triangle shaped design knitted with self-striping colored yarn. It's perfect for staying cool in warm summer weather. Hi, I'm Kristen and welcome back to my channel, Studio Knit. For our knitting supplies, we're using worsted weighted yarn number four, and I've chosen this cotton acrylic blend it's Karen Cotton Cakes. It's self-striping, and this color combo is called Beach Glass. I'll have a link for you in the description below. We're also using a size 10 US circular needle. It's 36 inches in length. We are knitting it flat, but the circular needle allows us to knit it all in one long piece. You'll also want to have scissors and a tapestry needle on hand. Additionally, you may wish to have needle stoppers. These come in really handy so that your stitches do not fall off the needle, especially with lace projects like this. It's a little bit trickier to place back on the needle. And I'm also suggesting knitting blocks and T-pins. This is totally optional. I always like to lightly block my pieces. This does look pretty good right off the needles, but when you lightly block it, let it sit overnight. It is stunning, allowing those lace eyelets to really open up and the entire piece to have a really nice drape. And if you'd like to knit up your own mesh shawl, please like up this video. It lets me know that you'd like to see more knitting projects just like this. The triangle shape of the shawl, it's 60 inches in length and then 30 inches in height. As always, I have the complete knitting instructions available totally for free on my Studio Knit website. If you would like a printable PDF, that is available for purchase in my Studio Knit Shop. So let's knit it up. We begin by casting on three stitches. We're beginning with the midpoint of the shawl. We're knitting bottom up row one we're doing six rows to set up and the first row is simply knitting these three stitches doesn't get much easier than that and the second row same thing knit three stitches on row three we begin our increases it's knit one and then a yarn over bringing the yarn to the front of the needle counterclockwise, knitting one, and you see that we are increasing with the yarn overs, another yarn over, and then knitting one. So where we began with three stitches, now we will have five stitches on our needle. Row four is simply knitting these five stitches, knitting five. On setup row number five, more increases with yarn overs. So knitting one, yarn over, and then these next three stitches, we're simply knitting three stitches, one, two, and three one more yarn over, and then knitting that last stitch. So where we began with five stitches on our needle, now we have seven stitches. And row six is simply knitting all seven stitches. Now we're ready to begin the four row repeat. And the techniques are really similar. We're just adding in a couple of decrease stitches now. So we're knitting one stitch, and then we are going to increase with a yarn over. And now we're going to decrease. Instead of knitting one stitch, we're knitting two stitches together, K2TOG, is knit two together. And now I'm going to add my little stitch marker. 
So I have two different colored stitch markers. The orange one, when that one comes up first, it lets me know that I'm on the right side of my work. I first yarn over, pick up a little stitch marker. I'm just using a scrap of yarn with a slip knot. And here you want to make sure that your yarn over wraps around on this side right here of your stitch marker because in between the stitch markers will only be one stitch and that will be the case throughout the entirety of knitting your shawl. We just have that one stitch in the middle which is being marked off by these stitch markers here. It helps us easily know when we're at the midpoint and then we're doing a yarn over and we're going to do slip slip knit. So you slip one stitch as if to knit again slip one stitch as if to knit, bring the tip of your needle through, and knit those two stitches together in slip slip knit. If any of these techniques are new to you, I have more thorough technique videos that you can check out as well. And then we are finishing up with a yarn over and knitting one. So on each of the right sides of our work, we're always going to be increasing two stitches onto our needle. For row two here on the wrong side, we're simply knitting all stitches. And as you're knitting your stitches, you want to be mindful of the yarn overs. Make sure that they're not crisscrossing over the knit stitches. Take your time with it and simply knit all stitches on row two. Here on row three, the techniques are the same. Just the order of the stitches is a little bit different to get those alternating eyelets. So we begin by knitting one stitch, a yarn over, knitting one stitch, and then the repeat of yarn over, K2 together begins. Here we're only doing it once. As you increase your stitches in between those asterisks, you'll be repeating those instructions. And then we slip the marker, knit one stitch, slip the marker, and we begin with SSK, slip, slip, knit, and yarn over to the last three stitches on our needle. And then it's knit one, yarn over, and knit one. Again, on row four, all of the wrong sides of your work, you will be knitting all stitches, being mindful of those yarn overs and taking your time. So you'll be knitting 32 repeats of rows one through four. That will be a total of 128 rows in addition to those six original setup rows that we had and you'll be finishing with a total of 135 stitches on your needle. And now it's time to finish our work. I'm recommending the stretchy bind off. You can just do a standard bind off if you want, do it really loosely. This one seems to work really nicely for this piece. You knit one stitch and then you yarn over. You're a pro at that now. <laughs> and you knit another stitch. Okay, from here, you take your left needle and you insert it into stitches one and two, right here, and then you pass it over that third stitch. And we repeat the pattern of yarn over and then passing over. So we're yarning over knitting and passing 
stitches one and two, taking the tip of our needle and passing it over. And we just continue this all the way down the row. Now the stretchy bind off does take a little bit more time, but I think you'll really like the results. So you might want to give it a try. I also have a video where I break it down a little bit more slowly for you. And once you get to your final stitch, simply cut your yarn, get that tapestry needle, thread it through, and then weave in that last little stitch along with your yarn tail and any other yarn ends you may have created along the way. It's a little tricky sometimes to know exactly where to weave your ends through. I just recommend not doing it too tightly. You really can't go wrong. Again, I do recommend blocking your work. I just use a spray bottle, spray both sides, make sure it's really nice and damp, pin it to my boards and let it sit overnight. Um, one or two days maybe at the most, but I think one day is probably enough. And I hope you're inspired to knit up this offshore mesh shawl for yourself with confidence. I have some other great scarf and shawl patterns for you. So here's my entire playlist. You can go browse and find your favorites. I'll see you there.